Hey guys, Chrome Terrell here. Today I'm going to do an episode of with the mini game Anima Islands. Uh, what you want to do to get there, you want to travel to the Lowestone and Lumbridge and run south. You want to walk on this little wooden platform here to the south beyond this agility shortcut. And I hope I can make it all the way through here. Click teleport on Wizard Chambers. Uh, there are some combat things here. But you don't have to bring combat, and if I'm not mistaken, anything but combat stuff is not allowed. So, like, I don't think they allow food or anything like that. The object is to do some skilling on Tusca's back, basically, with islands from the bottom of the sea. It's really complicated. Let's see what they give me first. Okay, this is the lightning one. What we want to do is charge this. There are traps on the ground here that you can set for hunter XP and the little lightning a uh, ball will go from here to there, that little white thing that charges that up. And you can also build these things over here. Whoop. There are four islands. Each island is going to give 25% charge to this overall, as long as I'm able to do uh, whatever. This will give construction XP, building the shattered pylon thing, and hunter XP with these little targety looking things here. That lightning, I never tried to kill that thing. I could probably. But, oops. And you've got to get to the to build the trap on the target before it actually does anything with that. Uh, you want to lure the sentient lightning over to here so it interacts with this other core part. And then just, like, click on it. Okay, and oops, that's going to, usually I try to build, for every two to three traps I set, I try to build one or two of these pylon things. Because it seemed to me, although I could be wrong, totally wrong, of course, that I wouldn't be able to do it just building pylons or just, oops. That one just disappeared. Drat. Okay, whoop, there's another one. Oh, and there's another one. After you've bent down to set the trap, you can feel free to click the next one or go to the next thing. Another sentient lightning, do the same thing. Oop. Did I just mess that up? I did. At least I think I did. Each, and this isn't a hard and fast rule either, each stage I think lasts approximately five minutes. The game itself lasts for, I would say, about 20 minutes exactly. But there was a few, there's a few seconds grace period between like beginning of the game and the end of the game based on what I'd seen. I mean, I don't really have a large sample of data for lack of a better term for this because I've only played the game like I said a few times only okay 15% we're getting to where we need to be there we go And their agility and other types of obstacles. There are some things I haven't figured out how to do yet. With one in particular, I'll tell you when that one gets here. And then I actually hope to get a nice reward uh, at the end of this. Because I built up some other points. Uh, the maximum, if you get everything to 100% totally, the maximum you can get is a thousand points in this distraction and diversion, which you can spend in the shop, wizard chamber shop. And you can also play this game once per hour. Unlike most other D and D's, there's like no, like 
daily limit or anything like that where like you can only do it once a day or whenever oh it says I've siphoned everything I can once it gets to 25 you can just like it'll still give you XP for certain things the activities themselves will still go on so if you want to get some like construction XP or like hunter XP as in this part of it here you can still do that and then it has it'll whoops I did that wrong It'll have like this psychedelic notification and like transfer when you're off the island. It's like you'll know when it's time to switch, believe me. Oh. The sentient lightning's done been lured. Whoop. And there we go. A weird floating animation, and we're to the next island. This is the agility and divination island. What you want to do is uh, this will help you get dungeoneering XP, that chip off gate stone. One of these things, these crystals in the center, will be spouting like a uh, yellow light, and you want to go to that one. But the thing about this is. Based on what I try to do, this is the active one right here. Based on what I try to do, you can only go clockwise on these islands. And if I'm not mistaken, you also cannot go backwards. I'll test that right here. See, we just came from there, and it says I can't reach it. It's also helpful to, like, kind of right-click on the next. I find it's helpful, like, climb cliff or whatever else you have to climb or go over so that you can have it queued up kind of so that you can just keep going where's the charge one? Oh, right there okay so if you right click on it then when the action takes place you can just left click and be there right away Uh, the Tusca, this event is originally based on uh, the Tusca Comes World event, which was done, I think the wiki had said, in like 2015, like November 2015 or something like that. So like, based on that, this is what players did in the first uh when Tusca comes as a world event was first introduced, this is what they would be doing. The only thing that's different with the rewards in the shop between there and here is that I guess, I didn't really do a lot of research on the wiki about this, but apparently uh, there were some like titles, like honorific honorary titles kind of things that you could get during the event that aren't available anymore now. But they still have... Well, I'll show you the shop when it's done, of course. They still have nearly all, if I'm not mistaken, all the other rewards you can get except for those titles. Okay. So this just is basically as wild as it sounds running around in a circle, jumping, climbing over everything. <laughs> Until you find the one with the little yellow sparkles on it. There we go. I'm not sure. I haven't really kept a lot of good watch on the this bar up here, which is how much anima you get. It's basically... 10 times whatever the completion percentage you get, but I don't know if hopping over everything gives you agility as well. I think it might, but if it does, it's not very much to speak of at all. Oh, yeah, it does. So it looks like, well, like 1% maybe.
I think I might actually fall a little bit short on this one, which is okay. Unless this particular one I come to in like mere seconds is the charged one. It's almost Matrix-like. Not quite as cool as in the Brimhaven Agility Arena when you dodge the darts obstacles, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, 47%. Hope to be able to get the last three before the kicked out of this island for the next one okay and there's a little bit of dungeoneering xp to be got over here i don't know how much well it says 825 xp not quite as good as a dungeon and i mean these activities like aren't any substitute for actual training i just thought it was something fun to do Okay, this one is the one that I developed. I'm not sure of the method for. What you want to do, you can do two things. You can go over here to get the, to burn down these tentacles. Or you can go over here to this altar over here to get a like a holy key and then dig into one of these graves. Go into the honor world, smack one of the spirits, and get them back to the part over here where it says last rites, and then get them back to where they need to be. I think this part with the tentacles is much easier. I haven't really learned how to do the other one quite well yet. I think the wiki had mentioned you'd need to get like eight spirits to do their thing to like release them into the to get them free on the other side or however they work it to get your 25%. It also helps with the same stuff as the other. So like when that burns out, you can right click the tentacles so that when that comes right back up, cause it'll tell you right away with that tooltip thing, you can just get right back to where you were with like minimal loss. And it's fire making XP, like not as good as regular fire making. I think you can burn a U log for over 300, 300 or 400 XP a piece. So this isn't very XP. It's not like some boss XP method or anything like that. Something interesting. And this is means the one will, this next one will be the one that's the tree uh, wood cutting and herb lore one. It's pretty interesting. And you just keep going. I don't know if it's more XP to get in the midst of a bunch of them so that these ones can be partially burned and this one can be fully burned by the Holy Torch. But it just seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay. Sixty-seven. We may not make it. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. So basically, at that part where we came in with the magical barrier, or barrier, barrier is actually. Uh, standing on the corpse of Tuska herself, who was like, I guess, I didn't do a heck of a lot of research on it, but it sounds like she was like some gigantic blind boar god 
who wanted to eat the world of RuneScape. So back in 2015, when this event was introduced, it was basically that everybody, all the players needed to band together to like basically defeat her to stop her from doing that. Oh, okay. We've got everything we needed. So yeah, basically, you would have to come down here for this other method. You'd want to climb the rock face, which means like actually go down it, climb down it. And then you would interact with this altar to get this relic of life. Then you would dig over this direction. Go underneath, because this would be the underworld. Then you would like climb up. And get to this lost soul here. What you would normally do. And then in the lower right, there's like a shaft of light that says last right. Then you would go in there. But I just, I find the other method much easier to do. There will be some strange things that look like a gigantic weird looking vacuum hose coming down here soon. I hope. Because I don't want to have to fight the tentacles because I'm unarmed. So I'm hoping things will be doing their thing here in a bit. There we go. Okay. See this vacuum hose thing? It's like a vine. It'll give you herbs, which is what we're looking for, and wood cutting XP. Uh, I don't exactly know like how much you would need based on things, but I usually try to get like 10 or 15 of these mysterious herb things before starting the part where you help the tree grow here. And Okay, I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Strange looking hoses or whatever you would call them. I don't know what you'd call it. Then you just chop and chop and chop. Uh, these tentacles won't bother you unless you attack them first. So if you have a weapon, you can do that if you want, but the tentacles will only give you one herb apiece. Okay, so what you want to do, click on the mysterious herbs that will crush them to give you herb lore XP. Okay, they want to go over here where it says Nurture Root and click on that with this in your inventory. Then you want to do that weird thing. Look at that weird thing. It looks like a foot or a tongue or whatever it is. That's the end of the root. So you want to make sure that the root grows like this. It keeps growing until it reaches... Oh, this is a longer one. Until it reaches this flower. And sometimes it makes it so it's not purple anymore. You just want to click on the part that's not the same as the other. Okay, this will sprout. You want to collect the seed. Okay, and then you want to return the seed to the tree. Just click on this when the seed is in your inventory. Okay, now you're done with that. You can either go here because there you can start from the tree itself or you can start from this other root because this has a root too now. It's about, based on what I've, what little I've done this, it seems to be you need to have about three or so roots that you need to have grown to meet the little flowers in order to get com total completion here. So I would need basically one more here. And I'm pretty sure that uh, chopping may give a little bit of like XP or what have you for the goal here. And I'm trying to figure out, may not quite make it. So I'm having difficulty. Oh, whoop, here's one. Nurture the root. There we go. 
I hope half a dozen's enough. I siphoned all the anima I can. Whew, okay, so that's your 100%. And you can continue chopping. And crushing the mysterious herbs and things. And we're back. In strange, poetic fashion. So this is actually the dead body of that Tusca boar a deity, monster thing. Yes, I got you some anima, old boy. And I got the anima, which is pretty cool. All right, so we want to go over here to the reward shop, and I want to show you guys what's up. Okay, these are just like armor overrides. Weapon overrides, the same thing. Uh, abilities, these are combat abilities. Tusca's Wrath is a good one. I want to eventually get that. Something special I want to do for you guys is to buy and use the Tusca Storm Teleport. I'm only saying that if you know anything about me, and I don't know if I've revealed this in other videos, but if I haven't here, I will. I'm not really that much for things like cosmetics. But this is so cool. It's like I I basically saw this and like I this is the only uh, animation I ever regretted not getting. This isn't the right one. When I saw somebody get it, walk, rest, teleport. Where would teleport be? Wardrobe? No. Appearance? No. Titles? No. Pets? Not in pets either. It wouldn't be in pets. It's ridiculous. Featured? No. This is embarrassing. If you're listening to this and you do know where it is, you're probably telling me. Spell animations. I walked right past it. Okay. Tusca Storm Teleport. We want to apply it. And then I want you guys to see what it looks like so we can both see what it looks like. I want you to see what it looks like so we can both see what it looks like together. I'm just going to teleport back to Lumber. It's something easy. Okay, that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, that's the end of the video. I appreciate you guys hanging out to learn about the Anima Islands. Uh, like I said, uh, there's actually no limit is to plays per day, just to make sure that you just play it once per hour. At the top of every hour, so like noon, one o'clock, two o'clock, three, so on, and you can get reward currency. There are better methods of training the individual skills out there, but I thought it was just a fun thing to do. And I'm looking forward to getting the combat ability Tusca's Wrath. And it's really interesting to see the override for the teleport animation. So anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, this is Crumb Tyrell. I probably forgot to say that at the beginning. But you guys keep going on your RuneScape journey, gaming journey. 
and life in general too. And we'll catch you guys next video. All right. Bye-bye.